All right. Let's get this thing started. Uh, if I can find a pen. <laughs> Just because I always have a little bit of highlights to write down and then edit out, and then one day we'll see them. Maybe. Okay. Music's a little on the loud side. Let me get that adjusted real quick, if I can even select my music properly. All right. There we go. Hey, let's see. How you doing? So, as you can see, uh, we're going to be playing on Archipelago. They've got a lot of stuff here. Also, Archipelago finally uh, got the top right island set up. I think they only have the bottom left island that needs work. Uh, but it's been funny to watch this map slowly get updated and stuff added upon it, which is quite nice. So, we're going to be working in one of those new areas that have recently been built up. As you can see, there's a massive amount of stuff here. Now. Spiegel! Oh, it's actually been 19 months. Yeah, right. Thanks for the 19 month resub, buddy. Hope you keep enjoying the operation so we get a nice kick out of this. But let me go ahead and go over the objectives here, and then I'll go ahead and uh, put the prediction up. So uh, there's a capture objective, the medical center uh, that is up here. Whoever has more players in this zone by the end of the 90 minutes gets two points. Uh, otherwise, Blue 4 have a unique amount of objectives based off of an ambassador. So... They have to bring the ambassador to the extraction point before the hour 15 mark. That is worth two points. They have to bring a journalist to the extraction point before the hour 15 mark. And then there's also a UN advisor that they have to bring to the extraction point before the 15 minute mark. I'm assuming that all of these forces are in various positions here. We do have multiple map markers here though. So I'm assuming these are the blue four spawn points. This is the cartel spawn point. Cartel have a cache right there. And I don't know where everything in terms of AI spawn. But then again, the interesting thing is there are green four slots today. So some of the players are going to be playing the objectives themselves. It's not going to be AI to drag around. So we'll see how things go with that. Why did the music not loop? It's playing Jet Set Radio now. I mean, it's a good choice, but it's copyrighted. Some of it is, at least. But... Yeah, no, the loop's on for that. That's weird. All right, well, thank you, game. Really cool. No, I guess YouTube, technically. <laughs> Regardless, uh, it's quite possible they're all spawning in the Japanese embassy, but we'll see how things go with that. So basically, we've got player mobile objectives. That also means they could potentially get killed in the line of fire. But anyway, uh, we also have the same objectives for Op4, uh, where they got to bring them to a temple, which looks right here, uh, the cartel cash location. Uh, all three of them are worth two points apiece, and then there is a survival bonus worth two points you win if you have more than eight people alive at the end of the game. So those two points are usually very good to get, but it just depends on how the AO plays. Uh, Blue 4 definitely going to have to uh, kind of skid into the island, cartel spawn on the island itself. I feel like the cartel is going to be getting first dibs on uh, bringing forces over to their end zone, so Blue 4 going to be mainly doing an assault here. Uh, but they can also bypass and hold the medical center early on, but that's only worth a third of the points that the three VIPs are going to be worth, so we'll have to see how this plays out. Uh, definitely, I'd say leaning more towards Op4, but Blue Fort could have superior gear pushing in. But with all that said and done, let's go ahead and put our prediction up. I will put it for a solid 10 minutes, and we will get this started. SDF, Japanese Defense Force, and Cartel Forces on Blue 4 and Op 4, respectively. I'll put it for uh, 15. Man, they're starting a bit late today. Usually they start by the uh, 3.30 mark, my time, but it's 3.37 my time, so a little late. Probably still uh, getting people sorted and whatnot. Usually when you have players managing objectives, that does also require a little bit of extra organization, but we also have a big chunk of players that aren't in either the Blue 4 or the Op 4 channel, so that's quite weird, but that's fine. We're up to 155 right now. This is your standard OFCRA match. Usually you're going to see a company versus company. Uh, if we were to divide 155 by 2, that puts us at about 177. Right? No, 170... No. Yeah, 78, 79 players. 
roughly to, uh, God, I can't math today to save my life. Yeah, no, it would be about 78, 79. Uh, Numbers-wise, there's probably going to be a slight advantage given to Blue 4, because they're going to be doing more of the assaulting here. But we'll just have to see what gear is offered to both sides to see how things are kept even. Uh, let's see, I'm good. I didn't really do much streaming yesterday. Instead, I think I got through 400 gigabytes of footage. Uh, put in a few more YouTube videos out to uh, up or not upload, but yeah, they were uploaded, but they got to be scheduled. But mathematically, I spent I think a week doing a two a day, um, one every two day upload schedule, and we did I think what five or six videos, so that was two weeks worth. Now I'm gonna start shifting it to a one every three days, and then either bounce between a one every three day or one every four day. So anywhere from eight to ten videos a month I think is gonna be more than fine maybe throw in some shorts here and there throw in some other stuff to showcase what we're doing still trying to figure out what I want to do with YouTube but this is the first time in a while YouTube's actually shown some positive on uh, <laughs> the uploads so. we can just keep that going that would be quite nice uh, other than that it's just setting up all the 24 hour stuff right now and then after we get all that sorted, it's shifting gears to the uh, August pay for pan uh, <laughs> I almost said pay for pancakes for whatever reason. Uh, pay for campaign specials and uh, what else we can do with DayZ. We're definitely exploding there. Uh, so it's a lot of organization and it's a lot of me uh, basically just getting a massive amount of work done. So uh, this weekend's gonna be Father's Day. Gonna be spending Saturday with Pop instead of Sunday because he's busy. Uh, He's had a hell of a week, apparently. I gotta ask him what he did, because, uh... <laughs> I get a text from my mother. She's like, hey, have you seen Dad? He's, uh... He's testifying before XYZ, and it's being put on live television. I'm like, what the fuck did he do this time? <laughs> uh, and then Bloodwing. Yeah, Dad's cool. Bloodwing's also getting, uh... A potential really cool job to do so we might have a really cool meme op to do in a few months if she gets it but she was offered it so uh we might go uh destroy satellites <laughs> so you know i'm just kind of sitting here like yeah i make arma scenarios <laughs> i thought i was doing pretty okay but nah everyone around me's got exciting stuff so i'm happy i'm just vibing uh, at least I can make my own homebrew and grow my own potatoes in buckets, which Bloodwing is, uh... <sighs> She's banned me from buying more buckets. They're taking over our backyard. No, he's not at Boeing. Um, he technically isn't for anybody. It's really... Like, okay. On the surface level, he's a government contractor. On the just below the surface level, it would literally take me an hour to explain what he does. But it's one of those really crucial things that without him, things fall apart in the United States government. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get the scenario cover. <laughs> How did you explain to Bloodwing's parents what I do? Um, you know, that's a great question because uh, they're, you know, first generation Greek to America. Her father works at the Greek embassy. Her mother works as a school teacher. Uh, they kind of dismissed it as normal boomer parents do. Uh, and then they realized what my income was after I was, you know, coming in nice clothes and taking her out to nice places while we were in high school and whatnot. And they're like, oh, wait. Okay. But, uh, no, no. Back in the day, they thought I wouldn't last. And, uh, yeah, here I am ten years later with her. <laughs> but they're cool with me now. Um, I always smoke with, uh, her dad and brother. And it's, it's fun. It's fun. But regardless, let's go ahead and cover the scenario, and then I'll uh, read in the chat. Uh, so Blue Four, okay. So Blue Four starting with a small group of uh, players here that are gonna be. Oh my God, they have P90s. And we also have one guy just standing around right here. A little bit of desync on the server right now, but I think it's just trying to calibrate 150 people. Um, 
Yeah, a little bit of network desync, that's fine. And then we got our three different VIPs over here. So uh, one's a journalist, one is a UN advisor, and one is, uh, God, I already forget, but basically whoever is able to get them to the extraction point or the cartel cash is gonna get a very nice amount of points. Let's go ahead and look over at Op4's assets. They all spawn here. So we have some built up, up armored technicals. We got some transport trucks, some ammo boxes. Weaponry appears to be some generic AKMs. We also have some PKMs I saw. Uh, that were in play. We have some scopes for some of these AKs, mainly PKASs, but we also have some of those uh, four times magnifiers. And then we've got uh, some, what are those, RPG 18s? Yeah, so single shot disposable AT, the older style stuff, though. Send we got some fully armored VIX, some with uh, PKPs now. on the back. Run away. There's a raptor RPGs after as me. Well. Oh, rainbows. Is that a death claw? <laughs> F11S. Razor's making fun of me for our latest DayZ stream uh, a few days ago because we added a fun, <laughs> large amount of fun stuff. But Razor, thanks to the 11 month reason. I hope you enjoy the operations. Hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Ah, uh, PKMs. I saw an SVD in play. We got some Bohemian Interactive caps. That's cute. Always love references there. And then we got some 50 cal cars, an SPG 9 car, mainly technicals. Nothing too high grade because they're meant to be a cartel. But have you ever actually looked into the Japanese's policy over drugs? It is wild. Don't bring drugs to Japan. You will never see your family again. Otherwise, let's look at the second group of Blue Four here. This is a special forces group, I believe, that's starting on the island. Hopefully, decent comes down a bit. They've got the MRZR right here, which uh, is a nice little all-terrain transport vehicle. Uh, they've got M4s, some magnifiers on those M4s. It looks like that's probably only for the squad leader, though. The rest have CC 68 sights, which are just red dots. Uh, but yeah, Mark 18s from the looks of things. Uh, Southern Blue 4 group here is going to be a Huey, unarmed. Uh, no transport camera. They got the open stuff below, so that's how they'll do their scouting. Got a lot of ammo boxes here. MP7s in play as well. I'm just making sure I'm not dropping frames either, because sometimes when I'm, like, desyncing out and dropping frames, it's sometimes my connection, sometimes I just have to reconnect. We got 249s in play as well, which those also could technically be mini-me's, but 200 round, 556. Five, I mean, those guns are always to note, because they're pretty powerful. And then we've got, let's see, four M2 boats, uh, a bit of a naval force coming in here. Rest of these guys, yep, M4-based platforms. Limited magnifiers, I think only for squad leaders. We got some GLs, though, in play. I'd assume 203 systems, and we've got some 113s in play as well, and some transport trucks. Ah, because there's a bridge right here that they can take. I was about to say, I know the 113s can be amphibious here. Oh my goodness. Oh, right. OFCRA doesn't believe in explosive damage. Anyway, uh, 50 cal up armored in play, some unarmed transport ones, and we've got some transport trucks back here. Uh, again, I'm assuming that they're meant to basically drive in here and uh, deploy on that spot. Looking at the medical center real quick. Oh my goodness, it's a texture. A <laughs> little bit of uh, pizzazz up top. Uh, some built up here. We got some... Uh... Yeah, okay. And then a bunch of pictures of God knows what. I do like how custom built this is, though. This actually does feel like a pretty nice little medical center here. Uh, only the first floor is uh, rendered, though. We got vehicle storage, and you can get access to the rooftop from a stairwell, as well as uh, some ladders and whatnot. But not too, too bad overall. Let's go ahead and look at the cartel cash position. This is the cartel, a.k.a. Op4, position to uh, bring forces in. Oh, they're going to sacrifice the UN advisor. Yeah, that makes sense. We have a tipped over couch here for cover, a tipped over table. Uh, these can be penetrated though, so if someone crouches behind that, they're probably still going to die. Regardless, you have some nice... Uh... Yeah, these are definitely added. There's some bridge room to basically get on top of these structures and, you know, mess around. But it's pretty decently armored. You got some uh, lumber you can climb on top of to flank it from a different angle. Get some grenades in through these areas. I mean, this is going to be a grenade hell. Uh, which sucks because they're probably gonna put the VIPs in this corner and go, hey, yeah, just stay there, buddy. That's where you live now. Then we do see some up armored parts as well, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and go over our roster here. We got two minutes. So, uh, Blue Four looking for the ground commander here. 
It's a little unorganized, though, so I'll just call it when I see it. India's going to be Samuel leading Kyle, Arena, Marcus, and Gonzalez. Alpha's got Phobos, Spirit, and Borabel. Uh, Pinkus leading Bravo with Artur, Awok, and <laughs> Leziak, Demavar, and Shadow. Charlie being led by Banyu with Hawkeye, Mike, White Foss, uh, Nordic, Rice, Williams, and Cable. Delta being led by Quinenz with uh, Lazervolf, uh, Natha, Parzival, Sonic, Steven, McSpit, Bravo, and uh, Arkazel. I Again, new names, man. I, I suck at pronunciation when I'm not familiar with them. Uh, Stifo leading Echo with Gaunt, uh, Teco, Herfron, and Nar Marty. Wiki Courts leading Foxtrot with uh, Maxic, Helena, Giovanni, and Skipu. NASA leading Golf with Ibnomane, Roy Camper, Kuboid, Wombat, Ash, and Mr. Dave. Yeah, give me people I recognize. I can. <laughs> blitz through their names. Hotel, I believe, is going to be the heli crew for that uh, UH-1 that's unarmored. Uh, Rigel and PHK are going to be a uh, pilot co-pilot team. HQ Blue, so Jonathan's going to be leading. Flip for Flaps at 2IC. Mancho, Head Honcho for Sierra is going to be playing as the medic. Uh, Rick Hunter and Zixmi also merging in with that group. Zixmi, is he a marksman? Yeah, I had a feeling. They sometimes put some special roles at the uh, command level, and that's definitely what they're going to play for there. Uh, Drago leading Juliet with uh, Thomas, Barbara, or Barbera, excuse me. Uh, Timek, Rambo Bamble, Rocky 19, Juggo, Syxic, uh, or Paysiac, that's it, excuse me, that, that was somebody else. Because, yeah, Syac and Paysiac, good God. Uh, Michael, Danila, and uh, Simon. Emil leading Kilo with Delta, Jack, Azenor, Sta, Minobi, and Arthic. And then Lima, last group here, is uh, Lolo, Wonder, Tackleberry, Mr. Cool, Nubass, and Swallow. We've got Averlon, who I think is just going to merge with maybe one of the naval teams. Otherwise, Op4 has Tweet King leading Barbero, Crazy Flora, uh, Kefir's Bed, Bananas, and Lalman. Oscar being led by Lolo with Alexander Sam and Green Thumb. Papa has Caesar leading, I don't even know how to pronounce that, uh, Nick. Lopata, Taima, Topez, and Grin. Kremit leading Quebec with Cali, Kevin, Dennis, Barros, Cheeseburger, Dan Wolf, Pogo, and Michael. Uh, Adricep leading Romeo with Defoe. Gerald, uh, Montes, Settler, Gregory, Adamek, and Wojak. Uh, Herzog leading Sierra with Lanel, Engel, Bauer, Bosberg, and uh, Richard with Sommer on the bottom. Uh, Fonz leading Tango with Goose, Snowo, sake. <laughs> Crazy Skelbro, Toxic Toms, Nolik, and Pierce. Oddball leading Uniform with Killer J, Dude, Sun Cat, Morgan, and Watts Watts. Grass leading Victor with Razor, Noah, Damian, MLG, Kebu, and it's Yurzao. Kaiser leading Whiskey with Lieutenant Kovalis, uh, Nickton, Misha, Zivofod, Admin, and uh, Hemir, and then Depso is leading. Otherwise, round has officially begun. NC, thank you for the raid, buddy. What Arma 3 mod were you playing? Uh, and it looks like Blue 4 is actually moving towards the hilltops over here. Op 4's main goal is going to be to kill the defenders of these VIPs first, get control of the VIPs, and then bring them over to the cartel cache. Op 4 is going to be trying to find those guys. Blue 4, meanwhile, trying to move to reinforce them. Desync is definitely hitting the server a little bit. You do see a few things rubber banding but it's certainly still playable. It just looks like the server's having trouble stabilizing connections, probably because there's a few players that have some really bad connections just dragging the server down. That's usually the uh, the weird thing. Uh, you're playing the Batman mod for Arma 3. I didn't know Arma 3 had a Batman mod, but hey, we learn something every day, right? Uh, hello, Charlo. Loru. I'm just going to call you Charlo then. Damn. All right, regardless, VIP's coming up, and... Uh, yeah, five defenders here. Are they just are they just taking a picture with them before they go and get slotted? The press guys taking a picture of them. <laughs> hey, before we uh, get murdered and kidnapped, let's uh, let's get a little group photo. It's a selfie. I find it interesting that they're not immediately banking to the coast. Instead, they're going more inland, maybe because they're worried that Op 4's vehicles will run them down. But. I feel like if you were to literally just follow and go into here, you could potentially run into Blue 4 or find a place to hide. That would be close enough for Blue 4 to actually infill and try to pick you up. So the fact that Blue 4 is coming all the way back here means they're going to just try to, like, hide in the back line and then potentially move their way back forward, which is a little risky, considering Op 4 is going to probably be defending their uh, cache location 
or maybe putting some stuff in the medical center early on. So it's going to create a defensive line of like right here. You would probably want to leave that zone though. Maybe like hide around the depot area instead. It's just, I think what they're going to try to do instead is something like this, where they then go south and then skirt around. That puts them really close to the cache location. If they get found, Alpha is just going to grab the VIPs and immediately put them there. So there's a lot of room for this plan to backfire. And I get they're trying to play, like, 4D chess here and, like, keep Op4 guessing, but that's a very risky plan. Ah, oh, of course, Enti, of course. Yeah, totally. So, this is Blue 4 with the hostages. They're trying to get the hostages to this position. I think roleplay-wise, the hostages aren't allowed to try to evade one faction or another. They're just there to play, it like, actual hostages and, you know... Wherever people with guns are is uh, probably going to be in charge of said hostages. But again, it's it's a weird call. And normally, OFCRA, they play defensive on their extraction points and the objective. And if they're being told to comb an area, they're definitely going to comb it. What we could also see is they're going to potentially push on the harbor and the book. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go get extracted through the boats back here and then bounce all the way up to this position. Or they're going to get picked up and they're going to go out of the play zone until they need to be brought in, unless that's against the rules, which it could be. Uh, but they're basically going to use the boats to either dismount infantry and move them in or mount people up in said boats. I wonder if there's a rule about that, but we could see that get stopped because we do have a 50 cal car right here. And if it catches those boats, it could easily engage them. Now, each of those boats do have a 50 cal to defend themselves, but it's going to be easier to park the boat. I am willing to bet the desync just killed somebody somewhere. Oh, wow. This thing is completely blocked off, so that's going to slow the convoy. I heard a vehicle go up, though. Something exploded. That would be over here. Yep, so that vehicle exploded. I don't know why, but regardless, we have Uniform pushing up. They're taking fire. They get hit with AT. That kills the driver and causes him to go into death spin here, and we've got two people in the back trying to survive. One jumps out and starts running. And the other one's just hiding back here. But three people down. He's getting hit. So Watts Watts, the only survivor there, trying to figure out where the other guys, uh, part of his group, were dead. We got another guy down all the way out here. Don't know what the heck happened to Kevin. Maybe the birds got him. Or he got hit by Truck Coon, because, you know, this is the Japanese Defense Force. They could have access to assets that we don't even know what's uh, around or imaginable. Regardless, looks like the car veered off up here. You can hear the boats driving by in the distance, but I don't think Op4 knows that. Instead, they brought the car up. That's a really big shame because now they're in a really great spot to stop this boat incursion. Op4, meanwhile, slowly pushing to the embassy. And I wonder if these guys hear the boats and they're going to potentially turn around and look for it. I think Op4 is also spacing out because they know Blue 4 is a helicopter and they could try to do a helicopter pickup of some sort. But it's a really weird call for that. Watts Watts with a bipoded PKP waiting for people to push to him. Very smart call. There he is engaging, but Halneraz spotted him and took him out. Probably saw his head barely poking up because he started engaging as soon as... Uh, Watts Watts was, so it made me think that there was a bit of a target sighted before that even happened. But look at Oscar. Oscar's moved off. And Blue 4 have successfully pushed additional forces here, and they're holding the LZ. I'm gonna be honest, this is a very tough LZ to hold. There's way too many positions they could be flanked from, but it's going to work out for them. At least that's what it looks like. So I'm willing to bet they're either going to be picked up in the boat and driven around, or they're just going to take that added infantry, create a much bigger screen, because they got the blue four group right here that could hold that opening. 
and then they could just bring blue four around on the southern side. And op four would be none the wiser right now. I think op four thinks they might have gone this way instead, and we'll just start trying to pursue them or pursue up to the medical center. They're not expecting blue four to come around like that, and the only tell they had was by these guys to pick up those boats coming around. They didn't. So I honestly think Depso's been a bit outplayed here. Jonathan with a pretty interesting strategy. But thankfully, he's been able to get it right under Depso's nose in off four. Uh, except we've got people on boats knocking themselves out. And now this dude's just taking a stroll. And now he's unconscious in the bow. Uh, now he's gone. And now he's in the bow. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm not an expert in aviation or, you know, boating physics or whatever the heck might that have been. But, you know, I'm just going to call it dark art heresy and move on. So I'm wondering if Op4 is going to potentially poke anyone out. Yeah, they might not even see it from this angle up here. They've just set up a pretty big blocking position. And meanwhile, Blue Force set themselves up here, taking out five dudes. I'm confused why this vehicle's all better. Maybe they had a few, uh, field kit to repair it, or maybe they got confused about something. But we have a... That was hit with AT, though, so they should be knocked out. But it's it's weird. But yeah, the little bit of d things definitely causing some... Uh... Ah! Uh... Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that happened. All right, VIP's coming over to the boats. So now, from here, it's are they gonna go back around this way? They. I don't think they can, though. They're going to have to risk going all the way out like this and then going around the southern side. Because what's the likelihood that Op4 is covering the rear of this area here? It would be more likely that Op4 is not pushed out. They might potentially have the medical center, so if they go around the northern side, they could be engaged. I love how Princess Kenny is one <laughs> is the ambassador. Ah, oh, that's just great. And there's a shrimp girl on the okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's me right now, and I have to look at that while I'm commentating. God damn. What's the third one? At least there's no weird decal on the third one. Are they trying to get the third boat in, or there's another boat right there? I don't know what the plan is here. But we do have Op4 now turning around. And they're combing this area. Seems like everyone's now turned around. So I don't know what the heck they're waiting here for, but if they don't move soon, Op4 might just find them. You know, I got some off-four moving around over here. Blue four on the ridge here. Doing some protection. Again, I think they're just meant to hold this position to make sure op four don't come down and camp the uh, capture zone. I just don't get what's going on over here and why we have so much just, like, I don't know what's holding here, to be honest. I don't see any heli... Okay, no, there's a helicopter coming around. Maybe they're trying to pick him up via the helicopter. He'll come around and get picked up, but by then, op four might know what's going on. And Blue 4 definitely starting to encroach on this position. That's an AUG. Yeah, it's an AUG. Auto Rifleman has uh, an AUG, maybe with 45 round magazines. That's, yeah, it's bipodded too. Damn. Yeah, at this point, he sees the boats out there, though. I just don't get why the third VIP hasn't been loaded on the boat. Maybe there's a special rule about it. But I I don't get why if 
if he can't go in the boats for whatever reason, then I don't know why they're not bringing these VIPs out right now. Why are they doing it all in one batch? They should be moving them now, you know? This is just giving Op4 an opportunity to knock some people out. But I think they're, no, the helicopter's landing force is over here instead. Rough landing there, but he was able to get everyone off, and now he's going to bank out. Maybe he need to drop them off first, and now he's going to go up the coast, but that's slowing them down even further. Just heard some sort of distant explosion. Can't tell what it was. Looks like it was the truck blowing up instead. Now Blue Forest suppressing this one player's position. And you have this massive op for group coming in. Like, I don't... So now the VIPs are off. Maybe because they thought this might be too OP. But I don't think that's a decision you make in game. I feel like if it was, you should have had op for doing, like, coastal patrol. At this point, you should have had Op4 lock something down that should have come in, so now they're just leaving. And instead you have the helicopter coming in, now Op4 is firing at that position. VIPs are dead. Great. Amazing. So, one VIP KIA. The others are getting sprayed down. Helicopter tried to come in. It's now landing. Like, what? What was the point of this? And you can't blame the cartel guys because they're just suppressing this position. And now Mr. White is not moving with the group. Instead, he's going prone. And he was the last guy to get on. And now he's just sitting. Now, I feel like he's biased because he was the one not getting on the boat. He's now sticking around while Op4 is coming in. And instead, he's staying here and medicking while he's under fire. Like, we just had three of these guys get absolutely destroyed. This is... Uh, this is one of the negatives, like pros and cons of having player VIPs is because you get weird situations like these. Would a UN advisor in a firefight pop a bunch of smokes and then come out and do medical on a guy instead of running with his people around, especially watching a guy get blown away? Like it makes no sense. Like, I feel like that, that's a bit of fail RP there. And it, he should be with these two. Granted, they're about to be intercepted and taken, but the whole boat fiasco there, I don't get. And now he's getting shot at, but... And he just got picked off by Barros, and he's getting double tapped. So now two of the VIPs are dead for doing what they should have done. He's now getting cable tied. I... I don't get it. So instead, these guys have no choice. Like, they don't have any other orders because they were literally meant to pick them up. And now that they don't have anything to do, they're just defaulting to going for the medical center. I thought it was pretty funny, which is why you heard me quietly laughing in the background. Got a little bit of red on red here. Well, Blue for now, again, trying to do their best here in this situation, but... Yeah, if Op4 can handcuff the VIPs, then why wasn't Blue for handcuffing the V... It, it feels really weird.
I, I feel like the only reason this happened was because Mr. White knew as soon as he was on the boat that was GG for him. So there might have been a stalling point so he could at least stay in the game now as an objective. At the cost of both other VIPs' lives. Again, I don't know what was mentioned on the ground. I really want to take a moment to tab out and see if there's like a rule against putting the VIPs on boats. But I feel like this is a good example if I'm, if, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't want to solidify anything yet, but if, if that's the case, if there's no rule against putting the VIPs on the boats, that was a great example of why you shouldn't have players in the VIP roles that are tied to objectives. Because that single-handedly torpedoed the off, and it sucks because that means everyone that voted blue for should have won, but we base it off of what happens on the server. And Op4 is probably going to gain the victory because of that. Oh, uh, no. Pog is in four hours. Speaking of, if you are a member of Pog, you have till 7 o'clock to DM me with what vehicle you want in the war games. If you are a member of my community, uh, there's not going to be any fill-in for Pog tonight. It's just them, because uh, Patch really wants to start Send keeping it internal to his community six. again. Send the boom, thanks for a 24 month reset. That gets you a golden Lance Corporal badge. Wait, no. Silver Lance Corporal badge. You have the standard one, and then the silver, and then the gold, if I recall correctly. But regardless, thank you so much for your support. Hope you keep enjoying the operations, and hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Yeah, so they literally just have them cable tied now. It just, it feels really weird. Yeah, right, OC. I mean, today is just going to be a meme op for like an hour. It's going to be the USS War Games flying around, blowing a bunch of shit up. All right, here. I am going to continue my camera work, but I'm going to open up my browser here because I want to see... Special mission rules. Let me put the camera somewhere so I can read these off. We also have another Blue 4 incursion happening right here. Send in goat teams. And I'll six. shout out that in a second. Been a while, but I miss. Okay, so here's the deal. Please take the vehicles that are assigned to each squad. VIPs and bodyguards are exempt from the distance rule. They can split into small groups if they wish. VIPs are not allowed to board a helicopter or leave the main island. VIPs are not allowed to carry weapons, only non-lethal weapons, and no AI in vehicles at all. All right. So with all of that said, let me retract something. Let me retract something, all right? Because that's the information that's posted before the operation begins. It's posted for a few days because OFCRA, they're allowed to make plans ahead of time. With that said, I take back everything I said about Mr. White. He was playing his role properly, he knew the rules, and he knew that he wasn't allowed to leave the island. And he is also dead. <laughs> Cartel moment. Someone's holding his fucking hat. Oh my god. Okay. Well, staying in character, here's what I was going to say. I was going to say, okay, so basically, Blue Four Command misread the rules. Mr. White was the only one that stayed because he had them realize that, hey, it's against the rules for us to leave the island because getting on a boat technically leaves the island. They need to be walked to the position. And that could have still been done. They could have literally snuck around on the southern side and then been covered by a Blue Four group to help them push through. That was all entirely possible. So the fact that Blue 4 made that error and got caught right here and Op 4 found them and took them out was all genuinely valid. It sucks that two of the VIPs die, but at least Op 4 is sticking to the rules and Blue 4 is being punished for violating them. And I was going to say, okay, so now Op 4 is going to be able to take Mr. White over to the, uh, the cartel cash position and uh, at least get those two points and be ahead and then they can, you know, put their forces up and also take control of the medical center and win with four points. Um... Except the cartel somehow executed Mr. White. So now the main objective of this scenario was to bring the three VIPs to one of two positions and they're all dead within the first 
third of the round or the match because it's an hour and a half and eight minutes of save start. So they, they're basically dead at the 20 minute mark out of an hour and a half. So, um, yeah, that's another example of why VIPs that are players are sometimes not a good idea is because maybe they'll say something and piss off the cartel and get their head blown off. <laughs> But that right there shows you why context is super important because it looked like for me, Mr. White was delaying the game. But here's the deal, Mr. White is normally a very good player. He wouldn't do it without a reason. And I knew I wanted to look for where that reason was and we found it, so. We did it, Patrick! We captured the VIP! What VIP? <laughs> God damn. So now with Six out of the 10 potential points either side can score gone. There's only two, uh, four points on the board for either team. The two point survival bonus if you have eight or more people alive by the end of the round and whoever controls the medical station. Op4 has the advantage here because they know that all three VIPs are dead. Blue4 still think there's one VIP in play. So Op4 just need to basically bring everything over to the medical center and take it. But it looks like Blue4 is actually about to take the medical center with their insurgent team. So... <sighs> you were referencing Breaking Bad? Yeah, that Mr. White. I gotcha. Seem to get knocked out. I just. <laughs> People always ask me for these cool little nifty features, and one of them from the PvP community is like, oh my gosh, Liru, could you potentially like show stuff where players are the objective and blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, yeah, I don't run the PvP stuff, but we'll see what comes up. We just saw two perfect examples of why that content normally doesn't work out. <laughs> I got nothing. Like, now it's just going to be a team deathmatch of whoever figures out they need to go and hold the medical center. And then all the other objectives will just go into place. This Southern Op 4 group's in trouble uh, because there's a big chunk of Blue 4 waiting for them. They could still break through. This group, Op 4, is kind of SOL. And then Blue 4 and Op 4 are still cl too close to tell, but Op 4 are garrisoned in a different spot. Actually, no, they're moving into reinforce. It looks like their initial team got wiped, so... This is weird. I would disagree with you, Charlotte, because that's, it's subjective. Some players are really good at being objectives and some aren't. Anywhere might see a really good flanking play in a second here, except he has an AKM and he doesn't know how to aim. And he's gone. Now Blue Force firing at Blue Force. Ah, excellent. Who doesn't love a little blue on blue on their life? And now they're running anyway. And guess what? They're taking more blue on blue. Meanwhile, that main op four push has subsided. They're now pulling back. Blue four have a really strong hold on this little beginning of the peninsula here. We have that blue four strike team coming around. They're looking for that VIP. Op four is slowly leaving this area because all the VIPs are dead. <laughs> Princess Kenny assassinated by drug carts. <laughs> That could be a great South Park episode. Follow up to their Game of Thrones trilogy. It's a little bonus episode about Princess Kenny's misadventures and it ends with her getting slaughtered by the cartel or just like, you know, a one minute gag. Good God. Why was the mission not thought out well, Depso? You were, I know you were a commander. Uh, were you blue fours or op fours? because I can't even find the commanders on either side right now. You're op fours. Yeah. But give me give me your two cents, buddy. What do you think's wrong with this mission? Cuz I I know what's wrong with it. But I'm curious to see what your feedback is. Cuz it could be in a sent, uh, lens that I haven't seen. And MLG is floating. And he just gave himself away. Did uh, email see him? He did not. Someone else did, though. Nubass did. And Nubass is trying to get him. MLG is not really being MLG here. And he's dead. Wow. 
So anyway, uh, up or down to one guy. It's Damon right here. We got Lapata, uh unconscious in a vehicle. So there's no one in the vehicle except him, and he's dead. Um. Wait, now he's over here. Then who was who's dead? Who's in the vehicle? Okay. Damien, meanwhile, holding position. Blue four. Only three guys left in this zone. Op four took some casualties trying to push in, but Op four is going to be able to now reinforce the medical center and hold it with their numbered majority because Blue four is still looking for that VIP that's dead. Uh, but Blue Four have a pretty solid force here, and they could move in and retake it. So, again, this is just all about fighting for the medical center at this point. And I agree with that, Depso. You should be told not to kill the VIPs then. Because that ruins the point of having the VIPs. But I get it, you know, you... In order to deny points, the best thing for you to do is kill the VIPs. Blue 4 doesn't know about it. You force Blue 4 to look for things that don't exist as they trickle into the final objective, and you just hold the final objective with everything. I get that. So maybe next time, Op 4's final objective should also be one of the capturable areas to promote holding that, because that doesn't force the defenders to f do a potential split of their forces there. At the same time, though, Blue 4 didn't even understand the objective and read the rules because they tried to extract the VIPs by boat, which violated one of the rules about taking the VIPs off the island in the first place. So it's just... it's weird. Alexander comes up, kills one guy. Timex gonna come around with that 249. Lolo's running around. Quick reload in a CQC situation. Almost always the 249 will win, but it's whoever gets the first shot here. Come on, Timex, turn that corner. Pre-fire the corner. You know you want to. Pre-fire that damn corner. You're scared of Lolo. Arma 3 PvP, everybody! Remember, in PvP, if you don't shoot your gun, you're probably gonna die. And we literally just watched Alexander reload, so he got heckin' confused. Happens to the best of us. Yeah, you saw that by a drone? Yeah. One of the PvPs of all time. <laughs> was it the best? Was it the worst? Who knows? It was PvP, though. Therefore, honestly, Opfor needs to shift gears, play an attrition war down here, slowly bring all their forces up, have a defense in detail around the medical center, and then they're, they're, they're fine. <laughs> yes. Damien's still holding around. There's an entire squad around him. Blue 4 has a few guys still right here, and the Huey is just flying around. Huey is going to be useless this entire op. Like, I get it. It's an insert piece, but, like, I wish it had a camera or something on it. So instead of a Huey, it was like a Venom, which I get, you know, the JSDF does have a lot of Hueys, but at the same time... They're just gonna have a low roll. Or, you know, give it a frickin' 240. I mean, Op 4 have 50 cals. That at least gives them something else to do. Timek killing Adamek as he runs up here. I feel like this could have been a little bit more optimized with everything. Not, don't give it bombs. Bombs are too OP. Um, but there needs to be an incentive or something to, you know, stop an incentive of certain actions. Because otherwise, one faction like, you know, Depso is just going to do silly things and murder people. Yeah, even when he pre-fired the corner, 249's fire rate. Uh, oh, wow, that grenade literally rolled into the next room. That's going to give these guys a false sense. He's going to counter push him. And he literally knockout trades with the lieutenant. Now it's a wake-up war. Unless someone intervenes. Nope, Rambo Bambo Rocky runs in. 
and runs with his tail between his legs. All right, so wake up war wise, it's gonna favor Timek. You're fucking kidding me right now. Did I just cast or curse someone back to life? <laughs> I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. You mean I can use my powers to heal people too? That's amazing. That's a very rare sight. Normally that just means he dies immediately. Ah, oh, that's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> Op4 is now surrounding this position, so it's probably not going to last for long, but... Oh, no, Rambo's a medic, so we can fully heal. Oh, okay. Damn. Anyway, <laughs> Blue 4 need to bring up reinforcements here soon, otherwise they're going to allow Op4 to hunker everything down. This group's now going to go check out the cartel cache and not find the VIP. So they're going to assume Op4 is just holding him in a position, which might cause these guys just to hold the cartel cash for the entire game, not realizing they're all dead. And again, Depso is absolutely right, though. There really isn't an incentive for cartel to keep them alive. Instead, maybe think Blue 4 they're still uh Make Blue 4 think they're still alive. Forcing Blue 4 to divide their forces, Op4 just hunkers down. I think what would have helped is instead of a medical center... Blue 4 needed to take the cartel cache position or, like, destroy some of the caches inside of that position. That way, Op 4 would be incentivized to, you know, get the VIPs, and if they find them, that's bonus points there on an objective they have to hold anyway. Yeah, no, Devil, I, I think of that, too. Like, we have a player right here, and he's dead. <laughs> Speaking of it, Timek died. I don't see him anymore. Huh. It was never a question of if, only when. I don't even know where he died. That's the weird thing. Actually. Oh, he died right there. And Pierce is uh, left standing. Grenades being thrown in. Could be being thrown into the little... Uh, Windows right here, but it looks like they're failing at uh, getting them in the uh, little windows there. You see where they're open, they can be a bit funky with their hitboxes. We got more grenades going. And they're still... Did they just blow two of their own dudes up? They, they blew more than two of their own dudes up. Ha! Huh. Huh. How did, uh... You know, Kevin's lag switch is uh, it's a fascinating thing because uh, that's how people get annihilated. Wait, all of Blue Four's dead. Who's still shooting? Ah, oh, yes! This guy with the AUG. He's suspicious. Let's see. Red Bananas, did you get him? If he got him, he'd have a negative... Wait. He doesn't have the negative one, though. So how'd he die? What? Who killed him? Wait, whoa, 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 wait. Cheeseburger. Damn, he literally had your gun, and you're like, yep, that's an Op 4 member right there. That's him, officer. <laughs> that's the person we need to kill. Anyway, Blue 4 only sent, like, you know, nine or ten dudes up here, and Op 4 managed to kill four of their own... Because technically one was already unconscious, but, yeah, in that assault, so... Uh, I have a, I have an idea. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five dead op four. Outside of there, we have a sixth, a dead blue four, another dead blue four, a seventh dead op four, an eighth dead op four, ninth dead op four, third dead blue four. I think more of the blue four died up on the hill as they were pushing in, but regardless, it's... We've got another dead Op4 there. I mean, Op4 definitely took a lot of casualties in these pushes. We've got some spent AT up here as well. Who's winning? I think Blue4 is by bodies, but Op4 is by objective control. But that's going to quickly switch. Blue4, meanwhile, now clearing out the cartel position, finding that there's nothing here. And let's be honest. Logically... Logically... 
why would OFCRA's sides not hold their defensive position if they had no intention of cashing in? Like, if there was a VIP alive, you would think they'd probably have at least a skeleton crew to hold there. Because if they don't, Loot 4 will go in and hold that position. If they try to turn the guy in, they lose. So... I also get that OFCRA is sometimes really weird with that. Like, they'll just completely leave in a place open when they need to turn something in there and then just try to rush them in last second. But... More often than not, if they're not going to hold something, it means it has no value to the side. All the more reason where Op4 should have at least kept like two or three people there just to fake Blue 4 out. To make them think, okay, they're holding this with a small group and, you know, they got the rest coming. Because if you're going to PSYOP somebody, you need to PSYOP them properly. Bro, if you get that headshot from this range, I will literally turn my face cam on right now. That's how much of a chance he has at killing someone with an AK at that range when they're in a freaking helicopter. Oh. So yeah, I, I assume they're going to potentially walk off. You got Blue 4 now trying to transition forces north and move them up. Damien on parallel with this group that's going to assault in, but Op4 have a pretty solid defensive group there now. So it's, it's hard to say what's going on. The desync's still kicking back and forth here. So I guess it's just one of those days where the server, not even the server, probably something weird on the mission files going on. Oh yeah, no, you're right. If he had an AKS 74 or you, I wouldn't make that bet. I would know like the man would just pull the gun out two tap that helicopter from a click and a half away. I'm not showing you my face on a gun that I know he'd be able to do it with. But that shitty AKM, get that shit out of here. There's no way in hell, which is why I make the pun. Now, I'm going to be honest, if, if Op4 was equipped with AKS-74Us and the likes and said these shitty AKMs, you wouldn't see this pile of Bob 4 bodies here. It would be a pile of Blue 4 bodies. Easy. In fact, there would be zero dead Op4 here at this point. But, you know, I don't handle the missions. Pierce is somehow alive again, but I don't handle the missions. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, I actually like Pierce. He keeps things not only exotic, not only a bit silly, but the man knows how to cook grenades aggressively. And in a tense situation, like if he's literally fighting four dudes, he'll just pull the grenade out and start cooking it. And I just see the symbol on him. I'm like, oh no. He's about to airburst like five or six dudes. Misha's now unconscious. How? Did the marksman get him? Who knows? <laughs> He's lucky there's no open fields. <laughs> there's some smaller ones, but he's in a building now, so he's not going to play in them. He's going to be playing in the open fields of the building. Ah, those nice little open areas. Damien running in. Here's the thing. If Op4 force Blue4 to trickle in like this, Op4 can still win by defeating Blue4 in detail, but if Blue4 reform and attack the final position on multiple vectors, they could win. But I think Blue4 is still holding their extraction position because they want to create a corridor to get the VIP in. Which is forcing Blue4 to split their forces. So Op4 still have a decent chance here despite Blue4 having a clear number advantage at the moment. And that's the power of a PSYOP in a situation like this. Op4 have fed Blue4 information to make them think there's still one VIP alive. Op4 executed earlier and it's literally changing the entire course of this game. But for Blue 4 having that information, Blue 4 would just form up and hit the medical center. But it's just, instead you have this weird trickling effect going on. You got a naked guy in the back. He's in the hot seat of the 113 with his clothes off. I did that once. Then they kicked me out of the army base under uh, threats of charges of uh, indecency. But anyway... Let's see if uh, Op4 come up, climb on, find this guy, and uh, give him a nice hot load. Come on. You know you want to. And it's a simple check. You just see if you can get in the vehicle. If you can't, well, it's enemy occupied. All right, climb on top. Look inside. What do we have? A nice surprise. Come on, do it. Yeah, so he just knows he can't get in it. And he runs away. Why do you run away? Get on top. Commit the execution. 
Don't tease me like this. Oh, we got a little bit of blue four here. Op four sending a team up to retake that position. Uh, Nick on the flank here. I think Damien successfully, yep, he ran in. Now you got blue four pushing a team in here. Bingus on point immediately folds back. Yeah, no one checks instead they're honing in on the gunfire. And then we do have a, uh, oh, an M2 striker up here. I think that was one of the vehicles on the bridge that they ended up taking. Then you got commanders chilling past that bridge. Our tour, 249 gunner gets knocked out. That's a very big loss because that gun, I think, is the best performing gun on the server right now, other than the marksman rifles in certain situations like the final objective. But CQC, 249 reigns supreme. But if you're pinned down and immediately picked off, that's very unfortunate for you. Blue 4 has a spearhead coming in. Some Op 4 guys in vehicles now going south. Could see a Blue 4 ambush if that vehicle continues. But looks like it's stopping there instead. Blue 4 pulling back instead. Not opting to stay in that forest. And they got this 113. With the 240 gunner pulled out, we just heard an RPG fire. Second RPG fire. And both missed. And the 113 now turns around with only one guy turned out. Why did you dismount? Okay, chat. When you take rocket fire, do you keep driving away or do you stop at the site of where you took the rocket fire and just sit there? What do you do, chat? What do you do? When you take rocket fire when you're in a vehicle, do you continue moving? Or do you just sit there in place? What do you do? Clearly, you do what these guys did and you sit there and eat the rocket. Because what that does is that allows for your team to dismount and run away because this game is freaking weird, man. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, just raise your hand up to the rockets here and go, no. And then legally, he can't shoot your vehicle with the rocket, right? Yeah. You know, because a cartel clearly cares about legal ethics of rocket fire when they're, you know, a cartel selling drugs. Legally, of course. Then again, you don't call it, a, uh, call it a cartel at that point. You call it Big Pharma. But, you know, it's technicalities. You got Monsters looking around over here trying to find more dudes. And Shadow might spot him. And Shadow misses all the shots because he goes in half-cocked. You dismount like an NPC. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh yeah, no, when you're in a firefight, sometimes you can just call a timeout. Why did these three dudes just ambush four people? Okay. That's amazing. They, I think, grenade ambushed these guys. Because some are waking back up now. Bro just had his head spin on that one. I... I think Blue 4 lost. Hear me out. I mean, we only have some small Op 4 teams here, but a lot of Blue 4 is way too spaced out. They still think there's a VIP to save. So these groups are just thinning out where Blue 4 is. Meanwhile, this group's pushed in, but look where they are. I mean, they've taken heavy casualties. They're down to six people with a seventh unconscious. Op 4 has a strong defense over this site. They've got the main roads locked down with 50 cal cars. I And look at its effects. One down here, one dead, one dead. Two red four guys knocked out, sure, but we already established that for whatever reason, Op 4 takes a higher KD over here, but I don't I don't see how Blue 4 can regroup and push in at this point. Leziak gets found and knocked out by Wojak. It's it's a mess. I wasn't expecting these three to get a nice ambush on four guys. 
Oh god, Sonic's on blue for and he's got a 249. He's got the fastest firing gun in the game, Chief. And he's got, oh no, he's got a solution. You're too slow, Sonic. Way too damn slow there, good god. At least his buddy Shadow's still alive. But for how long? Yes, I did make a, sh a Sonic You're Too Slow joke, all right? Sue me. Did you just shoot the unconscious guy? Why would you shoot the unconscious guy? Sir, please. Wojak executing Leziak in the back there. I heard RPG fire to the north. I come back here, and now there's only one guy still alive. Oh, look, another. That's an SPG-9 shot. Oh, now they're just bullying poor Emil here. Run, buddy. Just don't imagine that uh, SPG-9 rocket's an energy sword, and you'll be fine. I... What did I just say? I breathed on you. I breathed on you. And you fell over. Sir. Crazy, can I send you that clip and you just edit in an energy sword that just comes in and stabs him? Would you do that for me, buddy? Because I feel like that's what that clip needs. I will literally get it to you tonight if you agree to do that. <laughs> Just fly it in. Just, 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 like, tap him with it like it's a baseball bat or something. I don't know. Like, I just breathed on that man. And somehow insta-caster cursed him. I, my caster curse just came into the freaking game and just flicked his light off like a freaking light switch. <sighs> Liru's hurting himself in confusion. Oh, Shadow's dead. Huh, neat. Poor Sonic characters. Anyway, anyone gonna grab that 249? No? Oh, the 203 is not a bad system to grab. Unless I see someone like PHK here, who is a pretty good player normally, do something like I was about to say channel his. Okay. Okay. All right. I see how it is today. I see how it is today. All right. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah, I agree. Crazy. You got a bad PNG, that damn thing. Definitely. Um, yeah. Zixmi's on three kills. He could continue to pick people's heads off. Maybe he could thin out enough op for it here to actually do something. All right, come on. Zixmi, you got to wait for them to poke their head out, and then you got to take the shot, dude. But I'm going to be honest, like, he's one of the only players I would trust to go on an Overwatch position and actually take people out. Twig is looting him. He wants, uh, <laughs> he wants that damn Mark 18 rather than that AKM. Ooh, wait a minute. Golf. Golf might have been the team down here that came around instead, or they were picked up by a helicopter and dropped off. Are they with Hotel, or is Hotel dead? Hotel died in a fiery car crash. Helicopter crash. Okay. This, I think, is Blue Four's last chance. They've got a decent chunk of infantry. They got a marksman. He's on three kills. He knows what he's doing right now. It's six me. Which usually means he's either gonna do really, really well or he's gonna kick the bucket. But I believe in Zixme here. Um I saw that and I thought immediately Zixmi was going to get shot in the head because now I'm paranoid about everything. Now my tracer is like to turn off today. But we could see a counterattack and maybe Blue Fork could get their foot in the door and give the rest of this force enough time to get picked up and then moved in. But again, this force needs to go into the AO at that point. If these guys were to reform come in, pincer move this AO, I think blue four would still have a pretty solid chance, but that's, that's it. 
Yeah, I just need to shut up. <laughs> I need to stop looking at players and go, yeah, he's gonna do fine. Only for them to get immediately shot in the face, right? Six me trying to line up that headshot, unable to. So I wouldn't count Blue 4 out just yet, but it definitely looked earlier that they were going to defeat themselves in detail. And that could still happen. You could still see a solid defensive line. Op4 still has a defensive advantage here. And Lolo got an angle and just killed one of the Blue 4 guys right here. Sorry for night vision and you guys. <clears throat> but he's running out. Could... Oh, I thought that guy was a lot closer. No, he's all the way down here. All right. Striker coming in, but I think it has the uh, a turned out 50 cal. I think a crow system would be way too OP for it, but I feel like he's just going to get hit by the SPG-9 or something. If we saw Blue 4 reform, take that 113 and just drive in quickly, again, could be a change there, but don't think we're going to see it. Dix Me is going to be locked on on trying to hit those guys. Maz rounds now coming in. I think he just nuked to somebody with the mods right there. And you know what? I'm all for that. Let's bring out more new noob tubes. Let's uh, get some direct hits on some infantry. Keffer is here trying to now flank. Gets a smoke grenade thrown out. We got some forces on the ridge coming up. Wombat gets spotted. And that blue fort group is quickly cut down. Zixmi in a firefight with Lolo. Kills him with his handgun. Against the guy with a freaking M18. You did you did not just oh. It's about to say if Roy just blew on Blue Six me, it's over. Zix yeah. Zix me channels his hatred for the Polish <laughs> up his game. That man is one of the most racist people I know, and it's against Polish people for some weird reason. But hey, everyone has their reasons, regardless of, you know, if it's their own or if it's, uh, gosh, hereditary or family taught, whatever the hell. But I digress. Got a marksman up here shooting at uh, Ash here. He's pulling back now. But yeah, they're down to five. Now you got the striker coming in from a weird angle. And you still got Blue 4 all situated back here. So not really looking like Blue 4 is going to be able to get their foot in the door. But it could still turn around if No Mame gets Kafir and desyncs up. I think that desyncs by Lolo. And if No gets blown away from some sort of shotgun AK blast over here. AT just got fired. I have no idea to where. I heard a detonate in the distance. I didn't cast or curse anyone, I promise. All right, Roy's going CQC. Zixmi's getting himself some length so he can potentially pull his marksman rifle back out. Roy now gets a grenade up and might get a kill on Pogo with it. That grenade looked like it was in the center, right? Okay. And Roy gets knocked into the open and quickly cut down. And a two-on-one fight in the middle, taken out immediately. Ash trying to get Cheeseburger. Smoke bias going here, and Cheeseburger manages to stretch his leg out and knock a bush out. Okay. I get it. You know, you, you want to stretch before you shoot more people. All right. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. It's good to usually do your stretching before to warm. And he's dead. I think Michael just killed him because Michael was wondering why his op four brethren were stretching instead of fighting. And you know what? That's fine. I would be pretty annoyed too if my battle buddy decided to stop what he was doing and take a stretch and knock out some of the really nice bushes that our local, uh, you know, city officials installed. Because I am someone that does like plants myself. But maybe shooting him with your AK was a little excessive, buddy. Maybe. Possibly? Eh. <laughs> Who knows? It's the JSDF against Cartel. Maybe there's different rules here. Six me on. Oh, yeah, that fourth kill was the handgun kill. Now you got the striker just chilling right here. Oh, it's smoking. Oh, and you're in the back just vibing. Let me guess. The SPG-9 shot you. Yeah, that's what SPG-9s do. They, they kind of drive around and they hit you with stuff. Yeah, that's Twig King. You don't want to shoot him. 
though they thought about it, you saw him stop and line the shot up. Maybe that was Twig getting the kill. Who knows? Still have about 33 minutes left on this round. You know, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty GG at this moment. Unless I see Ash Channel. Uh, uh, nope, I don't want to say it. Don't want to say it. Ash will be fine, all right? I think he's at least going to get another kill on Michael. How about I just shut up? I have an idea. How about I just shut up and let the PvP play out, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Uh, some people can have two deaths because desync might have blown them up earlier and then they try to refund the body. Zixmi's still only on four. I at you. <laughs> um. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I just sneezed and murdered a man. Um. All right, I need to go and establish an alibi. Anyway, uh, Phobos over here just got hit by an RPG. And, uh, yeah. And he just got sent to the Shadow Realm. I, th I think you can stop shooting at it, dude. I, I think you won. I think you got it. No, it Zixmi... I saw a bullet tracer come in as I said that. Uh, or like, right as I said a chew and basically hit him in the head. So Zixmi should be on five now. Yeah. <laughs> It's just really weird timing. All right, so two blue four left outside of the AO. Zixme still trying to pick off who he can. We'll check back on him later. Blue four, I mean, we've got a group next to the road here in an op four vehicle coming in. Blue four, come on, rifle him. Rifle him. What are you doing hiding? Just shoot him. Thank you, except you missed. Got some op defenders back here, now trading shots. But yeah, Blue 4 and these separate groups are just going to trickle into the final objective and get defeated in detail. That's pretty much how this is going to go. Geralt realizes this isn't the Witcher and decides to make one little last magic trick and make his RPG go up in the air before he lays it next to him, all without using his hands. Stifo trying to eye that vehicle with his GL. You saw his sight up, but he is now holding, realizing that the vehicle just stopped there and potentially completely dismounted. Plus, that could be a vehicle for them to steal after they win this fight. And something blows up in his face. Gerald is a witch. Err. I don't know why that makes me laugh. <laughs> All right, so we've got some blue four mounting up in vehicles, but again, it's just going to be a trickle in case. Unless Zixme, I mean, he's on six kills now. Unless Zixme, like John Wicks, everybody. I'm not going to say Audrey, you know who, because that's going to cast her curse him, and that's been prevalent today, but. I'm gonna use the term John Wick. I, I think that means Zixmi will be safe, right? Yeah, he's still alive. And Stifu, oh, okay. Okay, cool. I should just start drinking, shouldn't I? All right, Marty's lining the shot up on Wojak. Or is it Wojtek? It's Wojtek, but I call him Wojak because I never see the T. My brain refuses to let me see it. Heard a Maz round fire off. Don't know where the hell that went. That was fired uphill. Stop watching people. You're killing them. Crazy. Could you imagine me giving you my damn highlight compilations for this and having you edit those instead? Good God. There's no money in that right now, but <laughs> maybe one day. Pretty sure you're crazy. So much to add it if you wanted it. The goober. 
Drinking creates and solves all of your problems. Yes. Yes, it does. Is he on seven now? Come on, Zixme. Teach me how to count to 24. There's only, what, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, show me how to count to 21, Zixme. Please. I beg of you. Yeah, meanwhile, these guys have dismounted over here because they're now going to potentially assault that position and see if that's empty again. And then you've got this guy realizing that this dude's naked having a combat jack in the back there. He's been there for like 30 minutes. Again, I get it. But I probably wouldn't do it in the combat situation unless I was desperate. I'm curious if Ash sees everybody up here. You're crazy, it's your cousin. Can your cousin channel his inner Audrey Hado? Oh no, Ash decided instead to go for the SPG-9 gunner. Damn, crazy, you can't hit anybody with that. Did you, did you see that suppression of him literally just doing this while he was shooting? I'm surprised Ash didn't get the kill on Bob here. I can't fucking do this. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. I can't do this. I can't keep changing the game. Crazy. Crazy, buddy. You gotta... How do you... How do you... What? What? How do you use that? Is that shootable? The gun. The, 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 the lid. The, the lid. The lid. The lid. The lid. What? Somebody help this poor bastard. Bro, please, that's, that's, it's... <laughs> please, don't. No. Oh, no, bro. What? <laughs> I can't. I guess that's why they call him crazy. Anyway, I hope that just went through the mic, too. <laughs> Six me on eight. Nope, still on seven. But he's got his handgun out. Meanwhile, we got two hunting around. Uh, another blue four guy is on. Oh, I was about to say he did not just croak as soon as I went to him. Good God. But yeah, no, blue four is. Uh, they're starting to mount up command. There's 25 minutes left on the clock. Ash is now up here. I mean, Zix me coming up here would be a game changer. Oh, hey, Dream. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I think we're up to 10 or 11 caster curse deaths. Someone's been keeping a head count, and I'm kind of losing my insanity here. Uh, losing my insanity would inquire that I'm getting more sane. No, I'm losing my sanity here. Ah, <sighs> Here comes Twig with his pink helmet, which I think he stole from one of the dead pilots. He definitely stole the gun from a dead pilot. Wait, no, they would have had MP7s. He just stole the rifle. Zixme just bolted somebody. Okay. And now he's up here. Just have Ash watch the door and have Zixme shoot people. I think he's baiting them to come up here. God. How did you get the kill from in here? But. But. What? What? But, uh, all right. Zixme has wall hacks. Cool. Awesome. Great. Uh, Ash is still alive. Cool. 
Abracadabra, Lag Switchica. It's a real spell. Anyway, Settler's still running around these three guys. That was a rocket, and I'm not sure if that hit anybody, but it was funny. Kelfers is just wagging his tail over there. Pierce in the open rooftop. Ah, yes, Pierce's natural habitat. And he has no idea where he's getting shot from. He just fires a random shot out. Bro, he's ready. He's waiting. He's looking. He doesn't know where it came from. Well, I mean, if you can't find an open field, an open rooftop can, you know, substitute as a smaller open field. He's trying to shoot some of the people down there. I wasn't kidding when I said Six Mirror is probably going to be the only hope for Blue Fort at this point. There is a dead SVD shooter right here, though. Could take that gun, too. He sees Pierce. And Pierce is still alive. Come on, Six Me. You going to let Pierce live? They're so confused on where that shooter is, though, not realizing that he might be on that rooftop. Yeah, Pierce uh, got hit. He's bandaging. Uh, Shark, don't worry about it, buddy. It's It's been a weird one. Is Settler about to come behind the three Blue Four guys, or is he still looking around? He's still looking around. All right. Blue Four, I'm willing to bet they're going to stay there the entire game. If not, they're going to realize maybe five minutes prior they're going to move in. Op4 is going to win this one. The only way I could see this tying is if Zixmi gets them below eight players. That means he would need to get it to four players here unless these guys find and kill Settler and these two guys get killed off. But let's look at Op4's total here. We got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So five people need to die on Op 4's side. Meanwhile, Blue 4, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So Blue 4 are probably going to get that two-player survival bonus, whereas Op 4 are in danger of losing it. And I think the only person, Dixmi's on nine. The only person that could potentially win it for Blue Four right now is, oh, I thought he just slipped up. Good night, everybody. You're still here. I thought we called GG, guys. It's done. Ash is also dead. No, that's Twig. So where's Ash? I don't see him. He's probably dead. Huh. Great. Awesome. Let's see. So if Op4 still has eight people alive, they're going to get the two points for the survival bonus, and they've got people in the medical center. 
So Op 4's head count right now is one, two, three. I guess the most important thing is how many people are in this final zone. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, time check. Still 18 minutes, but that requires Blue 4 to move forces up here, which, granted, we do have a potential here. So this is either going to be an Op 4 victory or a tie game. Unless this final team literally sweeps, but that's only four people. And they're heading south. So I I think this is just going to be an Op 4 victory. Because Blue 4 are going to be camping a position that's not worth any value. Op 4 is only is taking the one thing of value right now because Blue 4 doesn't know where one VIP ended up. And it, yeah. Alcohol time. I've made this lovely blend of a uh, an oversweetened honey wine with a pure pomegranate wine using, I think, D47 yeast from uh, Lot Latena or whatever. And combining them 50-50 makes a really nice sweet mead. But with, like with a tart uh, pomegranate taste as well. nice and simple and it's cheap you just need three to six months to age everything but I literally have nine gallons of this stuff and it's delicious no the pineapple one with vodka is stoli doli that's when you want to get everyone drunk Quickly. Uh, loadouts, Op4 have AKs, Blue4 have Mark 18s. Op4 have SVDs, Blue4 have the bolt action 10 round, which we saw Zixby have. Op4 have PKMs, Blue4 have uh, 249s. Yeah, ambassadors are off. Blue 4 now have 15 minutes to go up there, but do they have the vehicles to do it? They might, because we see vehicles coming down right here, but Jonathan might get intercepted. Is it bulletproof, though? No. In fact, it was not bulletproof. Good grenade throw. Curves up right next to the driver's seat. Jonathan, as Blue 4 Command gets out. I mean, just by looking at it, the windows were too wide for it to be bulletproof. If it's bulletproof, it's like, uh, there's a different texture for it. Now we know. But no, if you ever uh, want to bring alcohol to a party or host a party... Here, let's see Settler double-tap Jonathan here as Blue 4 basically regroup. Yep, I'll drink to that. All right. If you ever want to get a bunch of people drunk at a party, make Stoli Doli. Stoli Doli, you take a pineapple, you cut the pineapple into some, you know, small blocks. Not too, too small, but, you know, I'd say, you know, one inch by one inch or they can be a little bit bigger. Uh, you put it in a container, you fill that container till the pineapple is completely submerged uh, in vodka. I prefer Stoli vodka, but you can even do it with some cheap vodka. Uh, and you let it sit for three or four days. And what it'll do is it'll, the pineapple will absorb all of that uh, disgusting alcoholic aftertaste in the vodka and leave it to be literally a very, like the most mild vodka you've ever drank to the point it's super smooth. And then you can just serve that to people as a pineapple flavored vodka with barely any kick. To the point people will think it's water, not realizing they're drinking pure freaking vodka and they will get drunk very quickly. Especially if you serve that before food. Uh, literally, a glass of that with me on an empty stomach all day will get me fucking hammered. Uh, it sucks, though, because I don't have any friends that like to drink and be drunk like that, so I never get to make it. But it's one of my favorite things to make, and it's super cheap. I would love more buckets, because I am trying to figure out how to grow my own varieties of potatoes but Bloodwing does not want me to have any more buckets. 
because we already have a pretty well stacked guard. And that's fair crazy. Um, I mean, the thing about Stoli is it also makes a really great cocktail base. So you can add, you know, some simple sugar or simple syrup, a sugared rim. You can uh, mix that with other drinks, and it really just gives basically another punch of alcohol without any punching of alcohol. Uh, what I've been perfecting right now, though, is making my own bartender's ketchup, uh, which is elderflower liqueur, and I've got a really good recipe for it. But it's flavored my way. And uh, compared to the price of the premium brand, which I'm blanking on the name at the moment, uh, I can either buy a bottle of that or I can buy literally the cost of a bottle and a half and make like 12 times as much. You just, again, need a bit of patience. But fermentation and all that fun stuff. Can't wait to teach my kids that. I met so many people in college that were... Uh, literally like let off the leash and they went to so many parties and like drank themselves in the stupors to the point ambulances had to be called a few times. My kids aren't gonna be like that. Literally gonna go, hey, you wanna sip? Here you go. <laughs> Little segue, Bloodwing didn't know what uh, Everclear was, but she knew what it was. She knew I had some and she's like, oh yeah, no, let's drink a shot of that. And I looked at her and I'm like, you sure? And she's like, yeah, let's let's have Everclear. And I'm like, okay. Literally handed her a glass of it, handed me a glass of it. I just, you know, poured maybe two to three shots worth. I'm like, here you go. Have fun. I looked at her. I drank mine straight. She took a sip of it and started violently coughing. And I just kind of looked at her. I'm like, what? It's Everclear. And then I told her, yeah, uh, you're drinking grain alcohol. That's like 160 proof, baby. Uh, we could literally turn that into a Molotov cocktail. <laughs> Yeah, she casually wanted Everclear. I gave her Everclear. And she literally looked at me, it's like, how are you drinking that straight? And I'm like, because I'm fucking weird. Someone in a previous stream mentioned Black Crack and Rum, and I gagged because that was my college drink. I'd inhale that if I needed to get drunk. Ah, oh, man. I like to drink. I can drink a lot. I like drunk streaming, but the thing about drunk streaming is it turns off all my inhibitions and then I get annoyed over the smallest of things and then I just shut down, which is why you don't see a lot of drunk streaming from me. I will admit though, I am drinking a bit right now because I need to purge the uh, thought of this uh, operation from my mind. Plus give it another 20 years of inflation People won't even be able to afford alcohol at that point. <laughs> They'll be coming to me to brew it for them. <laughs> Can you replace the pineapples with cherries? I don't think so, Sea Turtle. Um, you could replace it with licorice powder, though. Uh, licorice powder, for whatever reason, also absorbs all the yuckiness in alcohol. I don't know the exact science behind it. I think it's because of the enzymes in the pineapple. But, I mean, pineapples are weird in themselves. I mean, the, the enzymes within the pineapple will also start digesting your flesh when you eat them. So, <laughs> I don't know. Things are wild. For example, celery. You eat it. It takes your body more calories to process the celery than the calories you get out of digesting the celery. So, it gives you negative calories. So, if you want to lose weight, just eat a bunch of celery. It sucks because celery tastes like celery. But, you know, <laughs> life hacks with Liru. Just eat, like, 20 pounds of celery a day. You'll be fine. Well, okay, maybe not 20. Uh, 20 might be a bit too much. Try uh, five. <laughs> Go on a diet. Eat celery. <laughs> All right, Blue 4 now coming in with a 9 plus 1. So 10 player force here. Gotta remember, when you look at a vehicle garrison, they got the name and then the plus additional amount of people in there. So it's eight plus one, and then Jonathan doesn't have a plus next to him. So 10 people coming in. This is Blue Force last gambit. And then we got some dudes out here that I guess are looking for a patrol dick. If Op4 takes more than, let's see, we got five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think they still have 11 or 12. So if they take four or five casualties, then they at that point need to knock Blue 4 out below, but 
blue four have like 13 guys so oh no they got more than 13. they got 18 right now so if blue four lose five they need to knock out like the entire assault group here then again that might be easy if the assault group literally just drives up to op four and goose gets into grenade range Yeah, but there's something weird with the mission file causing desync. Probably a constant trigger check or something. And he's just not close enough to get those grenades in. I could put a delay on it, but that would require me to shut it down and put it on, but there is no delay on it right now. I only put delays on when the uh, hosts of PvP communities put delay on them. Yeah, so Op4 now counterattacking the position. Some of the Op uh, Blue 4 that were dismounted now getting taken out. They've got a vehicle here for Overwatch, but it pulled back for whatever reason. Infantry for Blue Force getting left out to dry, and Crazy is continuing his little flanking escapade. So now you got the vehicle pushing up, trying to do some suppressive fire on the rooftop. That's fine. causing Op4 to fold back. Cable under fire from Crazy. Yeah, Crazy's got a 249, gets Cable. None of the other Blue 4 members are turning because that's a Blue 4 weapon firing. They might think the audio ID of it is friendly. So Crazy has a continued advantage to continue staying on the flank and continuing to take people out. Going to do a bit of medical first because Cable clipped him. Mike gets headshotted. Hawkeye still working on a dead body, not realizing he's dead. Crazy gonna line up a shot on Hawkeye, kills him. Now you got White Foz still not realizing that it's hostile. Crazy gets that kill too. And Crazy is uh, pretty much gonna win this for Op4. Bryce Williams also taken out. Jonathan pushes up on his own, he gets killed off, and that is GG. That is a perfect example of how picking up an enemy weapon actually does something because they're gonna think it's a friendly shooting instead of an enemy because the sweaty people in this game have, rep, uh, have memorized what all the guns sound like. So if they think it's a friendly machine gun firing, they're not gonna bat a freaking eye. And you can use that to your advantage. Real quick, I need to check something. Blue 4 have five people in here, which means if we are down to two people left here, so five, six, seven, and then the eighth one, and then ninth one there. So if the two that are unconscious bleed out, Blue 4 aren't even get, uh, gonna get the two points for the supremacy bonus, and at that point, it doesn't matter if Op4 has eight people or more alive. Which at the moment, they've got 10 up, and Crazy finally went unconscious, I think because he got wounded and bled out. RPG shot comes in. Minimal damage. We see two impacts right here. That's interesting. More fire coming in, a little bit of blood. They're popping smoke. Smoke goes very far forward. But again, pretty sure this is gonna go GG to Op4 at this point. We've got three minutes left on the clock. That's it, it's done. Look what they've done, they actually stripped all the backpacks down and they're consolidating the ammo because they've also been picking up a bunch of Blue 4 guns as well. They got an RPG out. They're trying to look for where it is to penetrate it. 
Ah, uh, that's why. They might be using the HE rounds only. Um, those are OG frag rounds, which are pretty much just going to fragment. They're not going to do any damage to vehicles, but they will shred infantry within about an 8 meter radius. Considering if the terrain is flat, if it's hilly, then it's obviously less effective, but... We're GG at this point. Bonds passes by Crazy's body. Another RPG goes in. That actually knocks the gunner out because it is a frag round. It's still going to do damage. Another RPG hits, and that smokes the engine because I think he finally loaded the right warhead in. And the 113 teleports around. Flip for flap, trying to go prone behind the 113 to get some cover. And throws something and it explodes in his hand. And that is him down and another guy down. And that is now blue four, less than five players, or eight players. So they're not even gonna get the survival bonus. So that is op four winning four zero because they have at least eight or more players alive and the medical center under control. That is GG. Now you're just seeing double taps on the remaining players. Uh, gonna be honest, hour and 15. I don't see that vehicle getting in here in an hour and a 15. It could take it right and start barreling down. Maybe it'll get here in here with like 15, 30 seconds to spare, but that's GG. All right, any last minute questions, go ahead. Never have I seen a better defeat in detail example. I agree, Depso. This was a very sad example of it. And I think that's just because Blue 4 was too focused on potentially holding out for the VIPs. And that just goes to show the level of psyop and that was done because Op 4 knew all the VIPs were dead and there was no point in putting forces back there, but Blue 4 didn't know that. So Blue 4 got manipulated into a pretty nasty defeat in detail, even though Blue 4, I think at one point, had a near 2 to 1 player advantage. But they lost all of that because Blue 4 just trickled their remaining forces in this position where the actual points were valued. I think if this mission were to be run again, uh, this medical point shouldn't exist. Instead, the turn-in point should be Op 4's point because otherwise there's no incentive for Op 4 to carry the VIPs. Because when you have stuff like this, it really favors the consolidate on objectives instead of branching your forces out and you saw even when a force had a two to one ratio that's how it went so 10 to 5 four points for the op four that is gg anyway guys we'll be back in about three hours and 40 minutes for pog thank you so much for watching go operate operationally wait three hours now five six two and two hours 40 minutes not three hours go operate operationally enjoy the rest of your day or night cheers i'm gonna go drinking